Greetings, traders, and welcome back. Thank you for joining me again. Chris here, bringing you another survival guide. In today's discussion, we will be talking about commodities, as it pertains to trading, of course. We'll talk about how trading commodities work, as well as what the most traded commodities are, and talk a bit about how the commodities market works and operates. That way you can decide if trading commodities is right for you, especially if you plan on passing that gauntlet mini, it is important to be aware of all the different opportunities that you have available to you, even if you don't realize they're right in front of you. But without further ado, let's dive on into it and get on going talking about some commodities. Commodities exist all around the world and commodities trading is something that has been around since more or less humans have been around to some degree or another. But we need to start at the basics and that is what are commodities? While there may be an exception to the rule here and there, the best way to describe what a commodity is, is to think of it as a naturally occurring or an agricultural product that can be physically traded. In effect, a raw material would qualify as a commodity. The term commodity means different things to many people, and it takes on the likes of precious metals such as gold, silver, and platinum in some cases, or maybe livestock, and then specific products like coffee, wheat, and corn in other cases. And as you see here, I've listed off some of the most popular commodities that are traded on a daily basis. We have crude oil, we have coffee, everyone enjoys a cup of joe, we have natural gas, a way to power our homes in the northeast, we have gold, one of the most precious commodities of all time, we have wheat, something that is in most foods, then we have cotton, what our shirts are made out of, we have corn, once again, another staple food item, sugar, once again, something found in just about every food source, especially if you like your cookies. Then we have silver and copper falling into that gold and precious metals category as well. These are some of the most popular commodities that are traded on a daily basis. The characteristics of the commodities market have remained relatively untouched for hundreds of years. We can go back as far as the 19th century when farmers in America began to use what we now term as forward contracts to sell their agricultural produce, such as wheat and corn. Now, this was, the in effect, a futures agreement that was made between the buyer and the seller to deliver a specific commodity at an agreed-upon price at a future date, hence the name the forward contract, because it was forward in time. In order to reduce the risk to the buyer, the contract was secured with a part payment, now referred to as what is referred to in trading as margin, with the balance on delivery. In effect, the risk of non-delivery was reduced and the seller was incentivized to follow through with an agreed-upon transaction. The introduction of the bodies that are known as our exchanges of today, such as the Chicago Board of Trade, allow these to these forward contracts, that is, to be traded in a controlled and regulated environment, which ensures all parties on all sides feel safe and secure with their trades and that their contracts will, in fact, be respected. Even today, it is the exchange which provides a platform on which to trade the full range of commodities futures, which is central to the overall system itself. The exchange regulations and structure provide confidence and certainty for both buyers and selling, and that helps reduce what we refer to as the systematic risk. Let's take a moment to talk about how commodities trading works. In the minds of many people, there is a big difference between stocks and commodities when in reality there's minimal difference. You are simply buying and selling individual items, whether they are precious metals, shares, coffee, oil, or gas. While some of the more traditional commodities markets may still offer a physical area in which to trade, the vast majority of exchanges today are virtual as with most trading. That means that most of the trading done in the commodities market sector is done exactly the same way as most of us already trade on a daily basis. It is safe to say that the trading of commodity futures is an integral element of the commodities market for both speculators and those looking for physical delivery of specific commodities. While many people 
people frown upon the activities of some speculators, it's in reality, it's the speculators which add a huge degree of liquidity to these very active markets. So speculators play a huge role in the commodities markets. If you consider a commodities futures exchange as an information exchange, all of the opinions of those buyers and sellers, traders and speculators comes together to create a fair price for individual commodities and futures and derivatives. The top five exchanges for commodities trading worldwide are listed here. We have the London Metal Exchange, which is the world's largest exchange for options in metals. Then we have the Climax Exchange in the Netherlands, which is popular for energy contracts and environmental commodities. Then the good old Chicago Mercantile Exchange, which we know as the CME, which provides futures and options on a range of commodities. Then we have the New York Mercantile Exchange, which once again is the physically largest commodity futures exchange in the entire world. Then we have the Dubai Mercantile Exchange, which is the largest energy futures exchange in the Middle East. The different types of commodities available to trade are generally subcategorized into these six main groups. The first being the agricultural section, which is often described as grains, food, and fiber. The agricultural commodities market is absolutely huge. It takes in corn to oats, soybeans to soybean oil, wheat to milk, cocoa to coffee, sugar, and just so much more. Pretty much anything that can be grown is going to be classified as an agricultural commodity. Then we have the livestock slash meat commodity sector. The livestock and meat commodities market is very active and tends to hold and revolve around a relatively small number of commodities, which includes feeder cattle, lean hogs, live cattle, and pork bellies. That's about it for the entire category. This area of the commodities market is often impacted by consumer trends as well as animal disease outbreaks. So while it may look like a boring subject, the livestock and meat futures themselves can be a lot more volatile than you might think. Then we have the energy sector. The energy commodities market is one of the most active, taking in everything from crude oil to natural gas, heating oil to propane, and just so much more. The price of oil always takes the headlines with an interesting two-way poll. On one hand, OPEC is controlling member output to support the oil price, while on the other hand, we have a switch to green technology and fuel, which is also reducing the demand for oil. If we think about this with our current push for electricity, powered items like Elon Musk's Tesla, this is not hard to understand how it's a very weird paradigm because as things become more scarce, generally their value does increase, but at the same time, we're also working away from the desire to use coal and, and fossil fuels themselves. Then we have the forest products category. And while you might assume that the forest product commodities market is fair game for lumberjacks but nobody else, we can think again quite quickly. Trading of commodity futures in hardwood pulp or softwood pulp and random length lumber is a lot more popular than most people realize. So another one to be aware of. And then finally, we have metals. We have metals and precious metals. In the metals, the London Metal Exchange dominates the metals commodity market, taking in the likes of lead, zinc, tin, copper, aluminum, aluminum alloy, nickel, cobalt, and so much more various metal options that are traded on a regular basis. And the demand for aluminum and steel is something that isn't shrinking anytime soon as the world's population continues to grow. And the growth of the world's population does result in required more building materials, which is where metals can come in as well. And then the precious metals category is going to be your things like gold silver, uh, palladium, all of these are going to be the precious metals category. And naturally, it's not hard to understand how this is also a very attractive sector to be interested in trading as well. There are two main categories of investors when it comes to futures trading with commodities. We have the commercial investors. Now the commercial investors are going to be the investors that are using the futures market to guarantee a constant supply of a particular product such as say crude oil. The commercial investors are generally looking to take delivery on their product. Then we have the speculative investors, which is what all retail traders generally fall into. The retail traders are out here looking to trade and make a profit based on their speculation on whether price is going to rise or fall, but they're not actually looking to let that contract go to the delivery date, to the settlement portion, and actually take delivery on all those barrels of crude oil. Instead, they're just looking to make money on the value of the 
to crude oil rising or falling. Here we have an example of a futures commodities contract specification sheet. This shows us all of the information that we need to know for anything that we're interested in trading. The first thing to pay attention to is going to be what we're looking at, and that is going to be a crude oil futures contract for the October 2020 series. Then we need to see what the contract size is. This is going to reference the number of barrels of crude oil that one contract represents. So one contract represents one thousand barrels of crude oil then the contracts is going to represent how many we choose to open in this example we have two open which means we now have control over two thousand barrels of oil the value of two thousand barrels of oil is generally what a speculator is interested in they're interested in whether or not that's going to rise or fall and are making a decision in that nature then we have the price of each barrel followed by the notional value because the notional value is going to be our 40 times the number of barrels that we have control over. 40 times 2,000 is going to give us our $80,000 value. So we have $80,000 of market control. This is the value that we're going to make or lose money on. If the value of oil, for example, drops to say $39 and we were long on these $80,000 worth of crude oil barrels, well then unfortunately we're losing money. But if the value goes up to say $41, then hey, we're doing good and we're making money and we get to receive that profit. And here's the better part. Because of margin, we actually don't have to have $80,000 to be involved with this position or to reap the rewards of being correct with our analysis. Instead, we have to do what is called margin. And with margin, this is like a down payment. It is going to generally be somewhere around 10%. So, 10% of our 80,000 means we need $8,000 in order to control that $80,000 of crude oil. The margin is also going to be limited into categories of initial margin, which is how much we need to open the trade, and then maintenance margin, which is how much we need to keep the trade going. If we fall below the $6,000 limit here, then the broker has the right to either close our position out or tell us, hey, you need to bring your account back up to the initial margin to keep the trade going or we will close it out. There are many advantages to investing in commodities, but we're going to cover just a few. And the first is the fact that it is a hedge against inflation. Many commodities can offer a hedge against high inflation, with gold historically seen as a safe haven because commodities are valued in dollars. And naturally speaking, when gold rises, the dollar falls and vice versa. So investing in commodities can provide us a hedging opportunity. Then we have the portfolio diversification aspect. When investing in commodities directly or indirectly, this offers a very useful form of portfolio diversification in many ways. Not only does it help to balance long-term returns, but it can reduce volatility if we do so. Then we have potential high returns. There is an argument to suggest that the ability to invest directly into commodities reduces traditional risks associated with equities such as management risk. As a consequence, there is potential for increased returns. Then we have number four, which is less manipulation. The fact that there's less manipulation has to do with an argument that says the commodity prices can't be manipulated as much because they're more powered by the simple supply and demand formula than other markets out there, which means less manipulation and more predictable moves to some speculators. Now comes the potential disadvantages, with the first being potentially high risk. Now you can see this as what you will, but in order to have a high reward, we do generally need to increase our risk. Number two is going to be close correlation with the worldwide economy. On the flip side of the argument, suggesting that commodities are a hedge against inflation, they are also very correlated to the worldwide economy. In the event of a downturn, such as the one that we had in 2008 or currently, this would lead to a demand for the life of oil and other commodities. So you can consider this a potential disadvantage if the economy is doing well across the world. You could argue that this may not be good for investments in commodities. Then we have number three, which is going to be physical delivery. There are additional costs associated with the physical delivery of commodities, although in reality, the vast majority of commodity futures contracts are closed well before the expiry, especially in the case of a speculator. 
Trading commodity futures does have some notable aspects that I wanted to cover that are neither here nor there in terms of positive or negative. They are what you choose them to be. And the first is the fact that they are subject to leverage, which means leverage is something that is available to you if you so choose to trade commodity futures. Then we have diversification. Diversification is another beautiful aspect of trading commodities because even with futures, it does provide another diversified way to trade. And then market liquidity. In the futures market, the commodities aspect is very, very liquid. So this is a very promising aspect for us as traders because that means our orders will be filled when we want them to be filled. And then finally, it's also worth noting that they are sensitive, the commodities that is, to economic, political, and weather activity. Naturally speaking, if you're trading something that grows out of the ground, the weather can definitely have an impact on the production of that particular crop. So in conclusion, the commodities market is definitely something to be aware of, or at least be more informed on, even if you decide that it isn't right for you. But if it is right for you, then I am glad that I was able to provide some potentially useful information for you as you begin your journey in the commodities market. It's a very liquid market with a lot of opportunity out there, as well as a lot of potential for any trader out there, especially those of you that are working on your Gauntlet Mini. But until next time, folks, please click the like and subscribe button down below because I appreciate you for doing so, and I will see you in the next one when I bring you some more information. Thanks, you guys. I will see you soon. Bijou.